rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2490. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm on the other side of the country today in Warwick, Rhode Island. Been there several times, beautiful part of the world. A very special guest by the name of Rick Shad. Rick, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Oh, I am ready. I am ready. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, absolutely. You know, you and I talked a long time ago. You were part of Audrange. You put together the Concorde they had there. And uh, I've, for some reason, never gotten you on the show. But our, our mutual friend, Cindy Meidel, who brings me a lot of guests and seems to know even more people than I do. My son says I know more people than the Pope, but I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> uh, so I'm really happy that we finally got together here today, Rick. And you know what's fun? I built models as a kid, and we're going to talk about what you're doing. Yeah. Not models at your caliber level, of course. I bought the boxes and did all <laughs> that, but it was such a part of my growing up, and it is a part of us car people's growing up. But I want to ask you this question first. What's one little thing that maybe people don't know about Rick Shad? Well, most people do not know that my alter ego is the Pope of Plastic. The Pope. Well, isn't that interesting that I mentioned Pope? I kinda, it is. <laughs> yeah. And where did that come from? Um, I was looking for a name for my models online, uh, Instagram, TikTok, and all of that. And I was going through all these different names. And I, I said, you know, it should, be, it should involve the word plastic. And then, you know, what would be an elevated name of plastic and <laughs> I came across the word Pope and I in Pope of Plastic. I, I just laughed out loud when I heard it. And I said, oh, this is great. And I never in a million years thought that it would turn into what it has today. But the people in the modeling world, most of them have no idea my name is Rick Shad. They all know me as the Pope of Plastic. So the people <laughs> in the automotive world and the people that I work with, you know, on that side of my life uh, would be surprised to know that. My alter ego was uh, the Pope of Plastic. So has the pa the Vatican reached out and said, you can't call yourself the Pope? Uh, no, I have had a couple people. They were like, who do you think you are calling yourself the oh, Pope? Oh, yeah, yeah, I understand that, and, yeah. And, uh, and I've always said to him, you know, you have to understand what the whole, um, what the Pope of Plastic has evolved into. And I have really, since the very beginning, when I started becoming popular on TikTok, uh, was that I wanted to build a community, a very positive community that was accepting of all people. And a big part of that mission was to try to get people like yourself who haven't built a model in a million years, you know, to, to dust off that, an old model kit, get it out and build it because it's a really positive thing to do. And, you know, as we get uh, older, uh, it has helped me with my eyesight. It has helped me with my dexterity. And uh, it has really been a very positive influence on my life. So as the Pope of Plastic, I really preach that. Yes, I, I, I charge a commission to build models and I'm pretty well known for it. Um, but the whole goal of it was to have a community that was very positive. So I think the Vatican would probably say, hey, this guy, you know, yeah, he's poking a little fun at, you know, being a Pope, uh, but he's doing a pretty good thing, you know. And so I think it's a very positive thing. And, and overwhelmingly, it is supported in a positive, a positive way. Well, I think so. We'll have some fun. So let me give you a bit of an introduction here, Rick. Rick Shad is a seasoned professional artist and visionary based in Rhode Island with over three decades of experience shaping various industries from designing iconic T-shirts for clients like the Grateful Dead. Holy cow. Uh, speaking of the Pope, holy cow. <laughs> and uh, the White House. There you go. To innovating in the golf industry with the world's first belt equipped with a divot tool. Interesting. Kind of a bit of a James Bond thing going on. There. Yeah. Uh, Rick's creativity knows no bounds. His journey led him through packaging design, toy innovation at Hasbro, 
So he's been playing with toys a long time and is even yeah. representing exclusive cars like Ayrton Senna's rookie car. Very cool. Rick's passion culminated in co-creating the acclaimed Audrain Newport Concours, as I mentioned, and Motor Week earning global praise, which is something that's still continuing today. Now known as the Pope of Plastics. Rick captivates audiences worldwide on his TikTok channel, where he holds the title of top modeler, routinely commissioned to build intricate and unique models for collectors and enthusiasts located around the world. We're going to have a little fun here, but first a word from our sponsors, so give them a little love. So get your Elmer's glue out, if you even still use that, your (laughs) X-Acto knife, and we're going to build some models today. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? Then let me introduce you to Capitalize Your Finances. It's an online course designed to empower you with the knowledge and tools for mastering your money. This course will help you lay out the ins and outs of budgeting, the importance of emergency funds, investing strategies, and how to plan for a secure retirement. All this presented by financial planner Chris Paniotu. Chris has developed this course to help you effectively navigate your world of finance, with confidence. Stop stressing about money and start taking control. Enroll in Capitalize Your Finance online course today and pave your way to financial success. To learn more, go to CapitalizePodcast.com slash courses or better yet, go to the Cars yeah website show notes page for today's show and click on the link under Capitalize Your Finances. You'll be glad you did. Do it today. For several years now, you've heard me talk about Linkage Magazine. I've been a subscriber since the start. Their talented and creative team brings you a spectacular publication and website that shares the automotive passion from a worldwide perspective. Linkage is about driving, restoring, collecting, and firsthand experience at collector car auctions and more. They bring you real-world values plus rational, experienced opinions on the current markets. They cover the automotive world and the people who share our passions. And Linkage Magazine has grown, mailing you six issues annually. Join me on this journey with Linkage. They're geared for the automotive life. You can subscribe at LinkageMag.com. So, Rick, we are back. Now, this modeling, you said something interesting earlier about it's a nice therapy thing to sit down and build a model. I have adult friends that are into heavy into Lego building as well. I have a friend in Seattle here. He's devoted an entire basement to Lego world. This guy's a dad with two kids. I mean, but that's where he goes down and get his Zen therapy done. I have to ask, when did this model building start? Because we're going to share your website, your TikTok page, but the, the level of models that you build are not like my old boxes where I'd buy three boxes and make one car, but you're taking this to an entirely different extreme. How did this start? Interestingly enough, it was actually when I actually was starting the Concord with Audrain when I first got hired. And building that event was extremely stressful. And um, I needed something to kind of that was a, a positive to uh, to kind of calm my nerves and give me something else to focus on. And I had when I was at Hasbro, we would buy a lot of model kits and we would kit bash kits, which means you use parts from all different kits. That's what I used to do to come up with toy designs. So we would come up with these these toy designs. And in the process of doing that, when I was at Hasbro, I amassed a few unbuilt kit that I eventually brought with me when I left Hasbro. And I was sitting up in my office one day. I built models as a kid. My brother was an amazing model builder, and I always envied what he did. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to build a a model kit. And and I had a car model, and I remember it was was a Mazda RX-7. And I said, I'm going to build this model, and I'm going to make it look like it's driven across country. And I had these visions of what I was going to do. So I started building the model and I said, you know what? I have a big, very large LinkedIn following. And I said, I'm going to post this on LinkedIn as I build the model. So as I was building the model, I was like, wow, you know, I'm a lot better than what I was when I was a kid. And the people started commenting on this model. Wow. And it was amassing thousands of views. Wow. And, um, I said, man, I, I think I kind of have a knack for this. And I built the model. I ended up presenting it on a finished model on LinkedIn. And I think that post got like 10,000 views. Oh, or my something. goodness. And then I was hooked. Yeah. And then so I then I built another model. 
Uh, and that one got just about as many views, maybe even more. And then I started getting contacted by people. Hey, could you build a model for me? You know, could I send you a model? Would you build it for me? What would you charge? And I was like, wow, uh, somebody yeah. actually wants to pay me, you know, to, pay do me this? to build yeah. a model for him. I was like, this is incredible. Yeah. So while I was at Audrain doing that, the whole time I promised to myself that every night for two to three hours, I would work on a model. And I eventually started getting a lot of people contacting me about models. I was building models on commission, but just for fun. And that was really the start of it. And wow. uh, I took some breaks um, over the past few years to do uh, other things, to build some other car events and things like that. But that's how, that's how it all started. Oh, my gosh. So now when I think of models and many of our listeners today think of models, it's the old boxes that you would go down to your five and dime or your drugstore. In my case, Bird Rock Drugstore was sold models and I'd go down and buy those and bring them home. And they're a bit crude. Sometimes pieces don't fit together very well. And I think I said the wrong, uh, I think it was, te is it testers, that glue? Tester. 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 Yeah, that smells yeah. so, uh, yeah, some kids abuse that stuff, sadly. Um, <laughs> but um, the testers and all the little bottles of paint that you would buy and, and and all that. So, but you are operating at a different level. So when you made this switch from a basic build what's in the kit and do the best you can, you know, paint it with a brush or maybe you get a little bottle of spray thing to now what you're doing with this mm -hmm. much more, what, how did you start to make that transition? Because I think a lot of us, if we get back into modeling, and I think it's a great idea for, for older folks like me or anybody as a, a way to get away from society's craziness, listen to some music, build a model. How did you make that step to getting into serious models? And and I want you to talk a little bit about the difference between models like come in a box or models that are custom resin models. And then you get into the, you do some stuff where it looks like a car just came off a racetrack and <laughs> all these techniques and things. Was it just trial and error or how did you get to the point where you are today? Um, well, number one, the majority of the model you're going to, most people don't believe this, but the majority models I do are from the box. Oh, and, wow. Okay. And my customer, most of my customers, some of them have collections. Some of them, you know, never got around to them. They had inherited a model from a, a relative or the model means something to them, but they're not good enough to build it the way that it looks on the box. And they'll send me the model. Now, I don't just build from the box. I scratch build wiring i scratch build components you know to make it really realistic but the basic shapes that you get from a box or the basic components are all there so you can build a beautiful model from something that's in the box but it takes the right technique mm -hmm. to do it anybody can build a model anybody can follow the instructions and paint the model the way that the instructions tell you to do it and at the end of the day you'll have a decent looking model. Mm -hmm. What kind of separates me from the rest of people who just assemble models to somebody who builds models, which we kind of, there's a distinction there, is that I'm really taking, I'm really doing a lot of research. So I'm looking at the actual vehicle, you know, I'm looking at engineering drawings and things like that. And then I'm adding the components where I can. And most of the stuff that I do, what you can buy a lot of the add-on parts through, you know, different hobby outlets. You can add, you know, buy hoses and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. For me, funny enough, I look at that as kind of cheating. <laughs> so I like to build everything from scratch and that's all done by hand. I don't really rely on 3D printers. I don't rely on, uh, you know, you know, having somebody cast parts or anything. I'm literally making everything by hand. Wow. So that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it that is very hard to teach. And I, on TikTok, every day I am live building models and I have people from around the world watch me build models. And the thing that they watch me for the most is my painting. The whole realism of the model beyond adding in the wiring and the components is the way that you paint and the way that you weather. So I prefer to stay away from showroom condition cars or something that looks like it just rolled off the assembly line. I prefer to build things that, that are, that look used. Right. That's where the level of realism comes in because you look at somebody like amalgam models from the UK, which oh. their models go for 10, 20,000. I've had the uh, owner of that company on this show and you look at those cars. Those are insane. 
Yeah, and Sandy Copeman, the founder, is a very dear friend of mine, and I've done some work with Amalgam, and their models are unbelievable, next level. They look exactly like the real car, and and there's you know, and they're showroom condition cars. They do do some weathered stuff, but my models, it comes down to me. For some reason, I was born as an artist, and I can see and interpret color. I can under I can understand texture. I can understand layering of color. So when you're doing things like rust, oil stains, what it looks like when a car has been in the rain, you know, driving through a rainstorm, Mm -hmm. you know, where does the mud gather on the underneath of the wheel wells? Where in the country has it been driven? Has it been driven in Arizona? Has it been driven in, you know, Colorado? You, You have to weigh in all of these different things in order to create that realism. And the techniques you asked, you know, where did I learn these techniques? Everything I learned was trial and error. And I'm not trying to say, well, you know, I don't like other models or I don't appreciate what they do. I do, but I don't look at other modelers to learn techniques. I prefer to develop everything on my own. Oh, cool. And, and I think that's what gives my models a different feel. I think you can look at a model that I've done compared to maybe somebody else who's a great modeler and you can tell who's done it's just like fine. It's just like a painting. It's, it's fine art. Like, yeah. It's fine art. And people say, oh, you're, a, you know, you just build models. To me, they're not models. To me, most of the time I'm building a memory for somebody, somebody ha- who contacts me, their grandfather flew this plane in World War Two. Here we have these pictures of his B-17. We want it just like this. And then I build from that history. I do nice. the reason, you know, so when they, the model car plane, whatever it is, when it's unveiled to them, it really invokes all of those memories. And that can, to me, can only really be achieved through really understanding how to weather and how to add in that level of detail. And, and that's where the differentiation is. You know, what comes to mind, I just returned from uh, Luft Cult's event at Orange County Fairgrounds that's called Air Water. And it's because mm-hmm. they had the air cooled and the water cooled Porsches there. And sure. some of the car, they had over a thousand Porsches there. It was a wonderful event. I mean, it's just incredible. I love Porsches. But I was mm-hmm. thinking about this with what you were just saying. Some of the cars had been driven a long distance. So there's a beautiful car that's typically all detailed and stuff, but it had bugs all over the front. And I love shooting cars with bugs on the front because they tell a story that right, not only exactly. I like the cars used, but you can almost tell what part of the country. And we've got this thing about to happen, a phenomenon that is a weird event. Cicadas are Cicadas, about to come out, yeah. but there's two versions of them that are coming out for the first time since 18 something at the <laughs> same time. So we're going to have billions of these cicadas singing. <laughs> so um, the fact that let's take that, for example, how do you make a car like do you go out and look at actual cars, let's say with bugs on it and then try to replicate a fly that splattered on the headlight? Yeah, yeah? you're you're exactly right. So. When I'm walking around, whether it's mud, rust, something on a car bumper or something, I'll, it'll stop me in my tracks because I'm I'm always looking at things because I'm looking at applying it at some point, somewhere, wherever it is. So I take pictures constantly. Oh, cool. As reference, like most artists do. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so I'll take those pictures and then I'll use them as reference when I'm building whatever I'm building. If I'm building a, a Porsche that's driving out to, you know, wherever, you know, I'll do research on a lot of it is just is personal memories. You know, I've, I've been fortunate to kind of go all over the world and I kind of know the way things look and the way the ground is and the mud because I'm very observant. So I try to apply those things, uh, especially when it comes to like military. Oh yeah, knowing where knowing where a plane flew, where it was stationed, whether it was the Pacific or in Germany, you know, in, in England, you know, or Germany or whatever. All the you know, Russia, you know, all that terrain is different, so that's going to affect the way you know the vehicle looks. So I'm constantly observing, and I'm also constantly trying to apply new ways of doing things. So blood. Bl- bug splatter i have ways that i do that and it's all about tricking the eye sure it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's 100 percent accurate but when somebody looks at it they go oh my god that, that is what it is but the way you do things in in miniature versus how things are in real life is is different is oh, trickery yeah. 
Well, the, the thickness and things have to be right, too. When you think about wiring, tubing, even yeah. the material on the surface, one of the problems with many models is everything looks too thick. It's too thick. It's too. So right. that is a whole another ball of wax. Right. So and that's why when I get a model kit, yeah, everything's there, but it's not scaled correctly. So in order to make it look, excuse me, look correct, you must change all of that right. whether it's the wiring and the fuel lines for a formula one car or you know or, you know the uh the ignition wires you know on a volkswagen or whatever yeah. those the, those are the little details that people won't maybe don't recognize immediately but their mind is tricked to say oh wow that, that's you know that looks like a real engine you know right. um so you, you're exactly right it's the scaling also which is very important in adding realism in, into anything You'll love this story, Rick. When I was a kid, and my listeners know this, I started a detailing business when I was about 13, 14 years old. My first customer was my next door neighbor, Mr. Alan Swanser. He was an FBI agent. He bought, <laughs> he bought the first 1974 450SL Mercedes in La Jolla, where I lived, from um, a dealership there. And I would wash it for him every month. And one day I brought it back and I said, Mr. Swanser, your car had different kind of dirt on it. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, tell me more. And I said, it was blacker. The dirt was like blacker and more sooty. And he said, Mark, you could be a forensic uh, specialist for a trial. He said, I was up in Los Angeles last week. <laughs> And there was more pollute in the 70s. The air in California really was bad. It's it's so clean now. But there was all this pollution in L.A. because of the basin, you know. Yeah. And he said, wow, that's really interesting. So you mentioning that watching things, taking pictures. And I think for anybody out there listening that wants to get into building models, you said some really important, uh, drop some important golden nuggets for us. Look at things. We have these phones to take pictures. So now you can go back and say, how can I make the the dirt looked just right the way it splatters on the side of the car. Whereas most people would just overlook that and yeah. not see it. You mentioned that you do commissions. So if mm -hmm. somebody wants you to build something and we'll put a link to your website and how they reach out to you. Do you build, you mentioned airplanes, automobiles. Do you do boats as well? Will you build a model of almost anything? I will build anything that I'm hired to build uh, within reason. Uh, I've been I've built everything from boats to cars to tanks to motorcycles to train. I just did three trains for oh, wow. somebody. Uh, pretty much anything, you know. Uh, if they can, you know, if it's a memory and and we can, I ha do have the ability. But something there isn't a kit available that I can. I do have the ability to do. 3D scans and all that and, and have that can get very expensive. Um, but most of the time we can find a kit that's reasonably close to what it is that they want and we can make changes. So, um, but yeah, I build anything. I mean, I got my start doing cars mainly. Uh, that was pretty much all I did was cars. And then I was contacted by uh, a Marine Corps commander and he said, you know, uh, I've always wanted a model of the helicopter I flew in Iraq and I have all of the photographs of it. Yeah. Could you do it? And once I did that, then I started getting all these Marine Corps people. <laughs> sure. and I, was, I was like, and I love doing airplanes and, and helicopters and all that stuff. So then I started doing that. And Somebody contacted, hey, couldn't you do a tank? Oh, I had never done a tank, but then I ended up doing a tank and everybody was blown away. So then I get 10 people want me to do tanks. Oh my and then, gosh, wow. It just, it's, it's weird when I'm working, especially because I build live on TikTok every day. And when they, people watch me, if I'm working on a car, so it attracts car people. So right. then people will order cars for me and then I'll be working on planes and then that attracts plane people and then I'm doing planes for, you wow. know, a time so uh, so it's 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 really whatever anybody anybody wants you know um you know it's it's more expensive than people think it's going to be well, because every, everything is today right it's like well it, crazy. i mean a model a model for me uh depending on the scale but the average time to do a model is you know 100 hours sure so yeah uh, and sometimes more i mean i i just did, i did a huge um b29 out of all metal aluminum panels and it took me uh, 275 hours oh my gosh and, you know the person but the person who my customer understands that what i'm doing is art 
you know, and usually it's invoking, you know, a memory for them. And, and so the price usually isn't, you know, uh, you know, they understand that it's something that's going to be an heirloom that they pass down, you yeah, know, from yeah. person to person. So I do, but I do do small stuff that's not that expensive as well. So I had a past guest on the show here, Jake Gunnerson, who actually was one of the cameramen when I was doing a Cars Yeah television show for a year back before COVID. <laughs> Stop that whole thing. And <laughs> I had a car that many people know me about. In fact, just coming from Luft to Cult, I mean, was asking about my Orange Crush, which was a orange turbo that I had, which I sold. And the guy I sold it to was actually at Luft. And this guy, Jake, who was a camera, he goes, you know, I like to build really intricate models. He does that as a therapy kind of thing too. Yeah. And so he, he surprised me and built a model of my car. Now my car was a very, only three cars were painted at the factory in this color. I sent him pictures he matched it incredibly. I couldn't believe it. But he did things like even my Cars Yes sticker on the rear window. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, so what you're doing, yeah, is is these are little treasures that we have that really come together. And I wanted to ask you about mentors because I've had several very intricate detail model builders on the show, including you mentioned the owner of Amalgam, but also people that do scratch builds like you, who was a mentor for you? Who was an influencer for you that perhaps helped you or has helped you get to where you are today with this model building? Well, in model building, I have to say my oldest brother, my brother, Dave, uh, who lives in Australia now and, and probably is one of my biggest fans, you know, yeah. <laughs> now, but he would build models and he would never let me go in and watch him build, you know, typical oh, secret. <laughs> So I would sit outside his bedroom door and then, uh, you know, I beg to uh, see what he's working on. And uh, he was a great model builder. And he really was my earliest, you know, mentor as far as not that he really taught, showed me anything, but I tried to emulate him. You yeah. know, anything that he did, I tried to copy. So my mentor now is uh, Don Henderson. Uh, who was Mario Andretti's longtime PR guy. And I've been friends with Don Henderson for uh, a lot of years now. And, and Don uh, left the PR world and Mario Andretti to be, actually become a shaman. And, what? Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He is a shaman and he lives in Florida. And um, recently Don became blind um, mm. and just the things that he has taught me about life and living – uh, have been instrumental wow. in the positivity that he has given me whenever I've attempted to do something. Um, he's always, uh, he's always been there for me. And I, I, I pretty much hear from Don on a daily basis. And he's just one of the most inspiring people that you would ever meet in insightful, funny, genuine, and, uh, just, just an incredible guy. Yeah. You know, and and a, a a true mentor. I can call him, and uh, he always seems to have the answer. <laughs> and usually, it's the answer you don't want to hear. Yeah, the, so, yeah. <laughs> things are not always easy. They take some effort and work, right? You know, and I can tell you, I've had some bad days, and I've reached out to Don, and you know, and and then you, you know, bl Don's blind. You know, he went blind almost overnight. You know, oh and my gosh, yeah, and it, it's, but I've never seen somebody who's who's been able to grasp going through something like that and find uh positivity in it wow. you know and that's that's something to emulate you know oh, yeah yeah well let's talk about you being a bit of a mentor here today because <laughs> yeah. you're inspiring some people with your words that say you know what i used to love doing that this would be a great <laughs> hobby a way for me to escape the, the pressures of the world my job whatever how would you advise somebody listening to get into model building today? Well, I mean, it's and I do this all the time, and I can't tell you how many hundreds of people who have started model building because they watched me, they stumbled across me on TikTok or LinkedIn, and they're like, I never thought about building, I, you know, but I, I, I want to get back into it. How do I do it? Well, all you have to do is, number one, pick what you like. You know, do you like cars? Do you like boats? Do you like whatever it is? Go to your local hobby store or go online on Amazon. Amazon has, uh, and in fact, at the end, I'll give you my Amazon shop because I have my own hobby shop on Amazon. And go there and pick. It's not expensive. You go and get yourself something that you like. 
Start out with something easy. Do not start out with, okay, I want to build, I'm going to build a Tamiya 112 scaled uh, Formula One car John Player special yeah. because you'll quit the hobby in about 15 minutes because yeah. those things are too difficult. You want to do, you want to pick a model brand that is very, very good where you know the fit is good and it's going to be fairly easy to build as long as you follow the instructions. So a brand like Tamiya, a brand like Ravel, uh, those two I would suggest to maybe, uh, just start with, start with a smaller scale, start with, if it's a car you want to do, uh, start with a 124th or 125th scale car, do something that's basically one color. You don't want to get into something that's got an intricate paint job on it to start out with. And, um, you need to, you're going to need to invest in the different, paints that you're going to need. So read the box. The box will tell you what paints you want. Stay away from a, uh, from enamel paints. This isn't 1978. <laughs> you want to go to uh, acrylic paints now. And I would recommend using Tamiya acrylic paint because uh, it's water-based and it doesn't have a lot of odor. And it's pretty safe to work with. You can work in a confined area with it. So you don't have to worry about having a big you know, space or to go outside to paint. And I would definitely suggest, which a lot of people are uh, kind of surprised by this, but I would suggest getting an airbrush right away and learn how to use it. It really makes building models and painting so much easier. You are still going to hand paint, you know, some small parts and things like that and details. And you want to have really good brushes, uh, a good brush set and um, and just take your time and, and enjoy it. You know, I tell people don't you don't rush through it. It's not like, you know, it's not an instant gratification thing. <laughs> it's something that you want to take your time with and treat every little part and every little sub assembly as its own model. And just, if you do it that way, if you take care with every single part, as it comes together, you'll end up with something very beautiful at the end. And you just don't, you don't rush you know, uh, you don't rush through things like this. It's art, you know, and it's, it, it's therapy. It really is. So and that's why I always got the carburetor and the heads on my model stuck to my fingers. I was trying to put things <laughs> and I'd always push the painting and then go, Oh man, I should have waited for that to dry. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> patience is, is your, uh, your, uh, helper there. Yeah. Challenges. We do talk about challenges here a lot when it comes to how you created this world of model building and so forth. What was the biggest challenge you faced? Uh, the biggest challenge. Well, I was kind of forced into the challenge, to be honest with you. Uh, when, uh, when Audrain ended, you know, COVID hit, uh, the uh, car event world dried up. There was nothing, you know, uh, I was asked to interview to become the president of the Indianapolis motor, uh, uh Indianapolis motor speedway museum. I interviewed for five months. I almost, I came down to the me and one other person, I ultimately didn't get it. Uh, and then I went to M1 concourse and, and built two car events out there. Um, and then after that dried up, I really didn't have anything. And um, I wasn't really able to find, you know, work for some reason. I, d I don't know why, you know, but it happens. And I, I you know, I was kind of like, you know, I could have just gone into d depression, right, you know, yeah, yeah. and then I thought back and I said, you know, I, made a little money model building, you know, and I love doing it. So why don't I try, you know, to sell some models while I'm looking for work? And, you know, that was the, that was the challenge. And then it was, okay, I'm building these models and I'm doing it primarily posting on LinkedIn, but where else could I go, you know, where I could get exposure. And uh, a friend of mine said, uh, you know, you should go on TikTok. And I was like, TikTok? I'm not, I don't dance. You know, I don't cat videos. I don't do makeup videos. I and mean, then look at me. He was like, no. He was like, with all the negativity you hear about TikTok, he was like, you should really look at it because it's, it's one of the best communities as far as social media goes, one of the most positive communities in social media. And you should just try it. He goes, I think people would love it. It's all video format. And um, he goes, I think people will enjoy your sense of humor and watching you. And and reluctantly, I went on. And uh, within, I think, 
within the first month I had 500 followers and, and then I started growing from there very quickly. And then sure enough, people started contacting me about building models for them. And, um, and I really treated that. I think the challenge was people think that, oh, okay, I go on social media and I get a hundred thousand views and oh, that's going to make you rich. It's not the case. Just because people look at your content does not, really does not uh Drive doesn't, dollars. It doesn't monetize right. to anything right yeah the secret to doing what i'm doing was i figured it out early on was that okay if i'm going to do social media i'm going to treat it like a brand you know and that's where the pope of plastic really kind of came from okay here's my brand it's the pope of plastic people don't even know me as rick shad they know me as the pope and i did that on purpose mm -hmm. was that i wanted to build a brand and I treat that brand like it's my job every day. And it is my job now. Not that I don't want to go in back into the automotive world. I, I would love to do that. But right now, this is my brand. And how do I do it? I wake up. I wake up every morning. I get ready. I go on at the same time every day. I work. I take a lunch break. I come back on the same time. And people now are almost rely on that every day. Sure, it's like sure. them watching, going to school, watching me. I've had people that have watched me from day one and, and, and follow everything that I do. And, and it's, it's really incredible. But the biggest challenge was how do you build that? How do you, how do you do it? And the way that you do it is that you have to treat whatever you want to do. Um, you know, if it's something you want to do professionally, you have to treat it like your job and you have to be prepared for a long time, not to make any money and not do anything. It just takes a long time to build, keep building until finally people recognize you with the key is consistency, being consistent and not being confrontational and not being political and not being this and that. You need to be the middle of the road. You have to feel like um, you're talking to the people directly, you know, one on one. When I'm on live building, I'm always talking to the people like it's just me and them, you know, and, 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 and make sure that I try to answer everybody's questions. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's challenging, but I can tell you it is, I don't make a lot of money at it, but I can tell you it is the most rewarding thing that I've ever done, especially when people reach out to me and they say, you changed my life. You know, I was drinking myself to death and I needed something to do positive and, now I'm building models and it's changed my life. I have had, I can't tell you how many people have said things like that to me or people who are my one guy is he has cancer, stage four cancer. And he's like, you know, I had nothing to look forward to. And I look forward to you every day watching you build models. These people have become uh, a part of my life. It's in it's really incredible well you know. sounds like a podcast <laughs> same, <laughs> same exact thing i went through yeah it's really tremendous what you've done really proud of what you've done rick you know this next part of our talk i'm going to power through because we're we are running a little bit long but i do want to touch on these but i'm going to twist these questions up for quick answers around your world of model making will you let me do that of course okay i always like to ask about one special vehicle in somebody's life what's one build looking back now and i know it's like picking your favorite kid one build that really stands out for you what was it well i did a hudson hornet for jay ward at pixar oh my gosh uh and uh i did a hudson hornet but i did it uh like doc hudson but i did it as the real car would be you know, with the, and it, it looked, and I did the Pixar logos on it and it's all dirty and muddy, like it had just run a race. And, uh, and I came up with fictitious sponsors on the side and everything else. And, uh, to this day, that was one, that was one amazing build. And, and I believe it sits at, at, at Pixar, at least that's what Jay told me. On, said it's on display at Pixar, probably. Yeah. On his desk. How uh, cool is that? That's, that's one that was really cool. And my son, you know, kind of was involved, you know, uh, in doing that so that was really <laughs> very nice so i'm gonna crawl in your head a little bit be a bit of a psychologist if you sure. were a vehicle if you were manifest as a model not a vehicle real but a model of a vehicle what would you be and why well for sure I, i'd be a uh a ferrari i can't pick one favorite ferrari because i love them all so much uh and the, and the reason i would be in ferrari not just because it's you know they're the coolest and they're expensive or anything else but 
Ferrari has always been my favorite brand because of the art. Ferrari looks at things as art, you know, uh, and I relate myself from the day I was born. I was put on earth to be an artist and a, and a creative person in, in Ferrari and Enzo Ferrari and the way that they look at cars and automobiles and the workings of the cars from the engine to the body to the, the way they look, the stance, the way they go down the road, the way they sound. Every single bit of that car is art, 100 percent. and so I would see myself as a Ferrari and I can't pick one single one because <laughs> I love them all so much. The art and the artist in you. How about a great a book that you'd like to share with us today? My book, which was uh, written by a dear friend of mine, uh, Kenny Aronoff, the famous rock drummer who was the, the drummer for John Cougar Mellencamp and uh, John Fogarty and many, many others. He wrote a book called Sex, Drums and Rock and Roll. And, um, this is a gentleman that uh, it writes a book about how he became who he was from from a from a from early on seeing the Beatles on television and telling his mother that he wanted to be a Beatle, and then when he became famous, he actually played at the uh, the Washington uh, Center in front of Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr and Ringo. Starr told him that he was one of the greatest drummers ever. Wow! And that book. It's, it's just about growth and it's about, uh, you know, having a positive outlook on life and, and going through trials and tribulations and all the things that he went through and to where he is today. And uh, Sex, Drums and Rock and Roll, it's an incredible, incredible book. And he's an incredible man. Nice. Great recommendation. I don't think that book's been recommended, which is saying something because I've got a place on my website called Guest Recommended Book where there's well over 3,000 books listed there by my inspiring automotive enthusiast. So nice to have <laughs> nice to have something new on there. So I typically ask my guests that if I could enable them to go on the ultimate drive, what would it be? But I'm going to twist this up for the artist modeler you are. If I could allow you, enable you to make a model of anything in the world, Money is no object, it's intricate, how many hours, whatever, don't worry about that. What would that model be? Well, the one that I've wanted to do forever, and I may get the opportunity here soon, uh, is the Titanic. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I've always wanted to build the Titanic, and I think I will get the opportunity to. I don't know. It's just something from my childhood. It's something that, you know, I grew up. Uh, for some, even before Titanic, the movie, it was something I was, you know, fascinated by, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the mystique, the, the way it looks, the glamor, everything that, that, that ship, uh, it, you know, and when you think cruise ship or you think ocean liner, the very first picture you get, whether you think about it or not, is the shape of the Titanic and the funnel on the, you know, uh, but that's something I've always wanted to build. And, and, and I think I will get the opportunity. In fact, I know I'm going to get the opportunity to do it. That's something that I would certainly definitely want to do. And I will do. So we'll, Rose and Jack be on the bow, their arms no, out. No, 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 they won't be. No, okay. <laughs> and will it be the Titanic in all its glory or going down? Oh, no, no, no. It'll be the Titanic in all its glory. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, very nice. You've taken us on a wonderful journey today. You've no doubt inspired, you've inspired me. You've inspired a lot of people today. And I'm hoping some listeners out there who are kind of trying to think of how to fulfill some parts of their life are getting excited by this. I don't see why they wouldn't. Uh, you got me thinking about it. I can smell that glue already, but maybe the glue today is a little better for you than the stuff back then. I, uh, I don't think so. No, same stuff. Okay. All right. I'll keep the ventilation fan going. Uh, would you leave us with some uh, inspiring words of wisdom uh, before we say goodbye today? Sure. You know, my whole life, you know, I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to climb the ladder. I wanted to do all these things. And constantly I got pushed back from people who said, you can't do that, you know, and uh, you, you won't be successful at that, including my own father. He was like, you're never going to do make it as an artist, you know, and, and I think he wanted me to, but he, you know, he just didn't think it was feasible. You know, um, it's a very difficult uh, career field and, and path to take. And no matter what I did what in as an artist, when I started as a t-shirt artist or I moved into packaging and then eventually, you know, by creating a world renowned car event, which people told me I could not do, would not succeed. I always believed in myself 
I always believed that if I worked hard enough that that I, I could achieve anything. Uh, I just had to work at it. And I failed many, many times. I failed miserably at, at a lot of things. And those failures teach you to become better. And you have to be prepared to fail to succeed. And nothing is going to come easy um, overnight. There are no overnight successes. And I especially try to tell young people when I meet them and uh, I always ask them, I'm like, what do you want to do You know, with your life? And then they'll, they'll give you some kind of, you know, generic answer. I say, no, what do you really want to do? When you lay in bed at night and you dream about doing something, something big, something you never thought you could do, what is it that? What is that that you dream about? And then they give you the answer. Well, I want, I would always wanted to be an actress or I always wanted to uh, design whatever toys or whatever. Do it. Especially right. if, you're, if you're young, do it. I think your parents will understand if you follow your dream and and be willing to start at the absolute bottom and work your way up. The last thing I'll say about that is put your thoughts on paper, (laughs) because if it is not on paper, if you don't create an outline, if you do not create a path to get there and it's not black and white, it will never happen. Once you put it on paper, at least for me, something magically happens. I can I can start to see it. When I built Audrain, the Audrain event, it started on paper. And then that paper turned into a presentation. That presentation enabled me to be able to go to somebody to show them, here is my vision of what can happen. Luckily, I met Nick Schorsch from Audrain who had the funding and he believed in the same concept. And then three years later, we had the Audrain concourse in 2019. But everything starts on paper. It has to. So that's my best advice I can give to anybody is to put it down on paper. Yep. The difference between a dream and a goal and achieving achieving that goal. How can people learn more about you? The best way is to see me on TikTok and uh, or Instagram um, uh, at the Pope of Plastic at the Pope of Plastic. Uh, They can email me at the Pope of Plastic at gmail.com, the Pope of Plastic at gmail.com. Uh, on LinkedIn, you can find me uh, at Rick Shad, R I C K S C H A D. Those are the best ways. I'm live on TikTok every day. I build all day long, uh, pretty much every single day. And, and you can come in, you can ask me questions, you can watch me work and see what I'm working on. And uh, we have a lot of fun and uh, I do contests and things like that. This, uh, there's always something different that I'm doing. Uh, and I'm always mixing it up and, and you can contact me if you want me to build a model for you. Uh, just reach out to me uh, at the Popo plastic at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to uh, to build a model with for you. There you go, uh, Rick. This has been really fun. Uh, another shout out to our mutual friend Cindy Meidel who got us together yes, today. She's wonderful. She brought me so many guests. By the way, here's a little trivia thing about almost 25. Well, I've actually done over 2,500 shows here on Cars Yeah. Is the very first guest on Cars Yeah was brought to me by Cindy. <laughs> Rick Cole, the guy that started auctions during Pebble Beach Car Week was the first guest and it was because of Cindy. So uh, my hat's off to her for, for yeah, doing she's that. Wonderful. Yeah. She's- Rick, Rick, thank you for spending some time with me today, inspiring others. You are really, really wonderful at what you do until you and I talk again. I'll see you down the road or on TikTok building a model. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. This was great fun. I'm honored to say that my charity of choice here at Cars yeah is Tech Force Foundation. They help young people find an education and career that aligns with their passions. For those who love cars, problem solving, and working with their hands, a career as a professional automotive technician is the perfect fit for a fulfilling life. We're all wired differently, and not every successful career demands a four-year university. Technical education and the skilled trades matter, and we need qualified skilled technicians to keep our vehicles rolling. Learn more about how you can support tomorrow's driving force and workforce of technicians at techforce.org, like I do here at Cars Yeah! Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up! 
a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!